The Northwest Indian Wars lasted from 1785 to 1795 and had a significant impact on United States policy uh, as well as on the military. So the Treaty of Paris of 1783 is a, is a good starting point. Now, in 1763, we had the proclamation line and British uh, had exploration rights to land that is now south of the Great Lakes, east of the Mississippi and north of Florida. That land, as part of the 1783 Treaty of Paris that ended the American Revolution, Britain ceded. However, Native Americans were not present nor asked uh, about their opinions towards the cession of land to the United States. So Native Americans, without being acknowledged as part of the peace process, despite largely fighting for the British, uh, had their own land given away by another country. The Land Ordinance of 1785 created a method for expansion into this Ohio territory that was given away against the will of Shawnee and other tribes that lived there. Uh, and it included a way uh, to make money for the United States government due to the sale of the lands. Now, there were negotiations between different Native American uh, nations and the United States. 1784 at Fort Stanwix, the Iroquois negotiate, and the result of that negotiation process is the giving up of or cession of New Western New York and Western Pennsylvania. However, the six nations of the Iroquois, uh, which would be the Mohawk, Onondaga, Oneida, Cayuga, Seneca, and Tuscarora, refused to acknowledge the treaty saying that it goes against their beliefs. And it, it also largely took land from mostly the, the uh, Seneca. Now, at Fort McIntosh in 1785, you have the Americans forcing Ottawa, Delaware, Anishishabeg, and the Wyandotte to cede large portions of land that include some of the areas now modernly in uh, Michigan and Ohio. And then Fort Finney, the United States negotiators actually throw a wampum belt uh, onto the ground. Now, wampum belts were used uh, as a way to show what the negotiation meant. It'd be much like a contract uh, would be uh, in the United States uh, realm. And so that is an incredibly disrespectful act. And the Shawnee refused to sign a treaty at that Fort Finney negotiation. In 1787, with the Northwest Ordinance, slavery was outlawed in what was known as the Northwest Territory. Uh, the ordinance said that the area would become three to five states and showed how it would become uh, a new state as part of the nation. And in regards to Native American relations, the treaty said their lands and property shall never be taken from them without their consent. And in their property, rights and liberty, they never shall be invaded or disturbed unless in just and lawful wars authorized by Congress. Now, just and lawful wars, uh, that's bolded and underlined because that's a very questionable phrase in regards to the actual actions. Uh, the United States Congress determined just and lawful in a way that doesn't necessarily uh, seem so. Uh, the Creek chief, uh, Halloween King, said, Our lands are our life and our breath. If we part with them, we part with our blood. Now, with that mindset, uh, there was an organization of tribes that uh, lived in that Northwest Territory, the Iroquois, the Huron, the Delaware, Shawnee, Ottawa, Potawatomi, and Miami, which would be tribes that lived in what is now modern-day Indiana and Michigan and Ohio, uh, as well as parts of uh, western New York and western Pennsylvania, uh, allied together to resist the United States expansion into their land. Their goals was to prevent settlement west of the Ohio, and they also avoided any previous treaties signed with the American government by one of the groups within the alliance. In 1790, uh, there was an armed conflict, and a U.S. force under uh, General Harmar uh, of 1,500 men uh, is defeated by Chief Little Turtle, who was of the Miami, and Chief Blue Jacket, who was of the Shawnee. Uh, the largest defeat in United States history at the hands of Native Americans or Native American Alliance takes place in 1791 in a, and called St. Clair's defeat after General St. Clair, who was in charge. Uh, 900 casualties, 600 of which were uh, resulting in death. And the United States land claims are now in question because there is no army to enforce those land claims. But there is an alliance of Native Americans who have now successfully in two battles resisted uh, an American armed force. Now, some members, including the Seneca, seek peace uh, with the United States. Congress also revamps their commitment, appropriating a million dollars to rebuild the army, and they put the army now in control of General Anthony Wayne. So the alliance is starting to fracture. The United States is now gearing up in a more military uh, sense. The Battle of Fallen Timbers place, takes place in 1794. Now realize while this is happening, Washington is also having to deal with the French Revolution and former alliances and, and how to go about 
conducting themselves with European interests that are asking for debt to be repaid, uh, as well as now having the fact that on the Western border, they're struggling with military might uh, uh, of Native Americans. So in 1794, 12 miles southwest of what is modern day Toledo, uh, there is a small conflict called the Battle of Fallen Timbers. The American force is victorious, although it wasn't a severe loss for Native Americans. When they retreat, they go to a British fort and that fort, because the British, and as you'll find out in Jay's treaty, are seeking an alliance with the United States. The British fort is locked to them and they don't allow them in. And Native Americans realize they no longer have British support in this land, in this territory, and it crushes the morale. So Battle of Fallen Timbers is more of a morale and moral loss than it is a physical loss for Native Americans. And it ends up being the last battle in the Northwest Indian War. The Treaty of Greenville in 1795 is signed. Chief Little Turtle cedes the land of Ohio and other strategic locations that have become now modern day Fort Wayne and Chicago. Uh, the Mackinac Island, which has control of the Straits of Mackinac and Detroit, are all ceded uh, to the United States. Chief Tecumseh, which will come up uh, in the 1800s, it criticizes it for the same thing that the British did, which is giving away some of the land that wasn't technically under the control of Chief Little Turtle. Uh, and the Northwest Indian War officially ends with that treaty. Uh, when you look at these, uh, you see the Battle of Fallen Timbers, which takes place uh, just southwest of uh, Toledo. Uh, you can see the where Fort Greenville was, where the treaty was signed, Fort Finney, uh, where the Shawnee were negotiating, Fort McIntosh, Fort Stanwix, uh, and some of the other major events taking place. You also can see some of the locations of where Native Americans lived uh, during the late 1700s. All right, that is it for the presentation. I hope this helped better understand foreign policy in the 1790s.